Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of these poo bag holders. Put your roll of poo bags inside and pull your poo bags out as you need them. Oops, where's the end? There's the end. There we go. It's got a clip to um, attach to your lead. So whenever you take your dog out, you've always got them with you. There's no forgetting them when they're attached to your lead. Um, or your dog's lead, should I say. There's nothing worse than going out for a walk, going to get a poo bag out your pocket and realising you've forgotten. So with one of these on your lead, you'll never forget them. Anyway, this is, let me show you, that's the size. I've taken about four off that so far, but that's the size of poo bags I've made it for. They're quite big, actually. Um, you push the end through your little buttonhole that you've made and then of course you can't do this on camera can you and then put it inside the little pouch and then I've got some velcro to seal it because the last thing you want to do is to lose your poo bags poo bags out of your holder come to use them and find it's empty so there we are we've got velcro on the back to keep your poo bags nice and safe if this is your first buttonhole it will be an ideal project to do your first buttonhole on because there's only one there's no lining up of all the buttonholes you just have one to do and that's it one buttonhole so let's get started the first job is to cut out our fabric i've made a template six and a half inches by five inches or if you want that in metric it's 16 centimeters by 12 and a half centimeters I pin my template to my fabric and then I can cut around the edge. I'm doing it this way because I'm assuming, as this is a beginner project, I'm assuming that you won't have a rotary cutter, cutting mat and ruler. But if you do, you can go ahead and use your rotary cutter to cut out your pieces. Next, cut out your lining fabric using the same template as you used for your outer fabric six and a half inches by five inches. Pin this to your fabric and then we're going to cut out with our scissors. There's just one more small piece of fabric to cut for the tab and that's going to be one and a half inches wide and four inches long. One and a half inches wide, so that's um, in centimetres, that's roughly four centimetres wide and ten centimetres long. I'm just drawing this with my pencil, nobody's going to see it, and then I'm going to cut round the lines. And that's all our fabric prepared. The only other things you'll need is a carabiner clip, and you may need some um, hook and loop Velcro. Um, I'm using a very small piece and I've cut it in half down the middle. I'm not convinced you'll need this. I think the bags will stay inside without it, but just in case you want it, I'm going to include it. Then pin your two pieces of fabric together. So you want your lining fabric and your main fabric pinning together with the right size facing. So as you can see here with the dogs, I've got the wrong side of the fabric facing up and the right side of the fabric is on the inside and that's the way we want it. So pinned together, ready for sewing. When we sew, we're just going to sew down the two shortest sides. So the two sides that me measure five inches or 12 and a half centimetres. We're going to sew taking half an inch seam allowance. The half inch seam allowance is marked on your foot plate so you need to work out where it is and follow the line. If you look at mine, you've got three eighths of an inch, then it will be the half an inch and then the five eighths of an inch. We back tack at the start, we remove any pins as we go along and we sew all the way down to the end of the first side and then we back tack and we're finished. Lift up your needle, lift up your presser foot, pull your thread out and cut and then we can start sewing down the other side. So lower your presser foot lower your needle, back tack at the start and again taking half inch seam allowance so all the way down to the end, back tack at the end, lift your needle, lift your presser foot, remove your fabric and cut your thread. 
first trim any loose threads and then we're going to press the seams open so press those two side seams open using a nice hot iron and then turn it the right side out and then press again making sure that you can't see any of the light blue fabric on the side where you have the dog fabric so give it a good press make sure it's all nice and flat next we need to make an opening to pull the bags out from so fold the fabric in half with the raw edges to the side and the nice neat edges together at the top it's a little bit difficult for me to see my fold line so I'm just going to put a little white mark with a white fabric pen at the top and the bottom so that I can see where the centre line is. Now find the middle of that centre line we've just made which will be two and a half inches or 6.3 centimetres and put a mark. I'm using a blue pen now because it's on a white dog and then we're going to put another mark either side of this so about half an inch each side so you get an inch opening for your buttonhole and then just draw a line and because that's not very easy to see I'm going to put a pin at the top and the bottom so I know where to start sewing my buttonhole and where to stop sewing my buttonhole. Sewing a buttonhole isn't really that scary you just need to set your machine up for it put the right foot on your machine and have a little practice and off you go it really isn't that difficult I think this is an ideal project to practice your first buttonhole on because you only need to do one right so you need to change the, the stitch width to five and I have a special buttonhole setting just here so we put it onto the buttonhole setting and then the stitch length can be anywhere here you see there's a special buttonhole mark there and it can be anywhere within that buttonhole mark I try and get it as close to this side as the smaller side as possible and then let's do a close-up of this this is an automatic buttonhole foot and this is the one I use this is a manual one so with my buttonhole foot on I start by doing my bar tacks for the first end of the buttonhole and then the machine automatically starts sewing backwards so you have to start at the front and work your way backwards do your bar tacks at the back and then come forwards this is how mine works yours could be slightly different so obviously follow your sewing machine manual I'm having to remove my pins because it stops my um, foot from moving along. When I get all the way to the end, it will do the bar tack. Actually, I have to press a lever, then it does the bar tack at the opposite end and automatically starts sewing all the way back down to the front bar tack. And then that's my buttonhole finished. Then using your unpicker or seam ripper, make a hole at one end of your buttonhole right next to the bar tack and gently push all the way along till you get to the other bar tack, make in an opening, make sure you don't catch any of the stitches otherwise they'll come undone. So make sure you stay right in the centre avoiding any of your stitching and stop when you get just in front of the bar tack. The next job is to add a very thin strip of velcro or hook and loop. Um, I took about a one and a half inch strip and cut it down the centre to make it half as wide. Then work out where you want to position these and then pin in place. Then sew our two piece of pieces of velcro in place. It's a little bit tricky because they're so small but take your time and do a slightly smaller stitch than usual. If you do a 2.5 do a 2 um, and you should be okay. When you finish the first piece of velcro, do exactly the same to the other piece of velcro. Trim any loose threads with a small pair of scissors or some snips. Now take your small piece of fabric for the loop, fold it in half and iron. 
then take one of the sides and fold that in to meet the central mark that you've just made when you fold it in half. So iron the first side, then fold the other side to the centre again and iron that. And then we're going to fold that in half and iron again. Then I'm going to put a couple of pins in it and we're going to sew down both sides about probably a sixteenth of an inch from the edge on each side. So take over to the sewing machine and very carefully place it under the foot and lower your needle to exactly where you want it to go and then start sewing very carefully as I said about somewhere between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch away from the edge and we're going to sew all the way down all the way down one side and then we'll turn around and come back up the other side. Next we're going to attach the loop and sew the side seams. So fold your loop in half and we're going to place it in line where we put the buttonhole. So on the same line as we put the buttonhole, which is the central line. And I'm going to just clip in place for now. And then fold over the top side and then also include that with your clip. And then fold up the bottom side and you can close the Velcro if you want to. And then I pin this in place. And then I pin the other end in place, making sure that it's all nicely lined up. Now sew each end together taking a half inch seam allowance and I'm sewing the side first which has the loop in so when we get to the loop we're going to sew backwards and forwards a couple of times to secure it of course back tacking at the start and the finish. So sew over the loop, go back over the loop a couple of times and then carry on to the end and back tack at the end. Then sew the other side, again taking a half inch seam allowance, back tacking at the start and the finish. Of course this time we won't have the loop to worry about sewing over, although I do go backwards and forwards a couple of times over the join. Next trim the seams by cutting them to about a quarter of an inch and of course cut off any of the loose threads. Then if you like you can zigzag along the edge of your seams so treat it a bit like overlocking so do a zigzag stitch going from the side seam to the edge of the seam where we've trimmed it and do the same on both sides it just neatens it up a little bit and stops the edges from fraying the next job is to box out the corners so with it still inside out push your finger into one of the corners and squash, squash it flat with the centre seam down the centre so you make kind of like a triangle put a pin in it and with a fabric pen draw a line across I'm doing it about one and a half centimetres which is about three quarters of an inch so carry on and box out all four of the corners push your finger in squash it out to make a triangle and put a pin in and draw your line. Do the same to all of them. Push your finger in, turn it around so you get a triangle in the corner and then put a pin in it. Keep going till all four sides are done. Then sew across all four corners on the lines that you drew using a straight stitch uh, back tacking at the start and the finish and removing the pins and repeat for all four corners trim off any loose threads and if you like you can trim the seams so cut close to your seam about an eighth of an inch from your seam on all four corners if you wish to you don't have to you can leave them exactly as they are if you want to it's entirely up to you then open the velcro and push the pouch out the right way round pushing out the corners the best you can 
Then if you like, you can give those corners a quick press with a nice hot iron. Then all that's left to do is to attach your carabiner clip and then put your bags inside the pouch, feeding the end of the roll of bags through your buttonhole so it's easy to pull them out and then push the rest of the bags inside and close the Velcro. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, could you please like and subscribe? And I hope you manage to make one of these lovely little goop bags. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.